Hey everyone, thanks so much for joining me on this very first episode of App App Aperitif. My name is Karen Burns. I am the founder and CEO of Flying Start. And at Flying Start, we truly believe that education and entrepreneurship go hand in hand. Everyone needs an opportunity to learn and be in an authentic learning environment. That includes business owners, it includes startup founders, as well as students. So for this specific episode, um, we are going to be focusing on building an app prototype in Keynote. Of course, we are going to have the other app, which is Gougere. I'm going to see if I can hold this up so the camera can see it. Gougere are tiny cheese puffs. These are a typical drinking appetizer, and they're from Burgundy in France. And I first learned how to make Gougere when my husband and I worked at Le Bouchon, which is a French bistro here in Chicago, and they're absolutely delicious. So I'm going to give you the recipe for those. Also, while we're working on our app prototype, we are, of course, going to have a cocktail. This is a Negroni, so I'm going to give you the recipe as well for a Negroni. So all of these resources, the recipes and the keynote and this entire video on how to make an app prototype with keynote will be available on the Flying Start website, getaflyingstart.com, and hopefully we'll be back every week with a brand new episode of App App Aperitif. So I hope you enjoy. Thanks so much for joining me. Let's get started. For all this app prototyping we're going to be doing, we're definitely going to need a cocktail. So today we're making Negroni. So with Negroni, you put in one ounce of gin, fill a glass of ice, of course you could have it straight up, I suppose, one ounce of Campari, and you need to have a squeeze of orange. That makes the Negroni for sure a Negroni. Oh, I almost forgot. You uh, need to have two, the sweet vermouth, one ounce of sweet vermouth. You're almost ready. You just want to stir it up. And since we're not fancy here, I'm just going to use my finger. And go ahead and take a sip. Cheers. We're ready for Gougere. When making the Gougere, it's really important to have all your mise en place uh, together. You start by boiling the milk with the water. Add the butter. Make sure it's cubed. Once it's melted and boiling, you're going to add the flour and mix it really well. You're going to cook this for a while. Um, you're going to cook it until it starts to form a ball and there's a skin on the bottom of the pan. Dump it in the KitchenAid, and I like to let it uh, cool off a bit before I add the eggs. Pro tip, you want to cut up, crack the eggs into the bowl separately so you don't get shells in your pate de which is what your batter is called. Mix them in slowly, one by one. Make sure you scrape down the sides often. You want to make sure everything is mixed in. Once your batter kind of smooths out, loosens up, sometimes it takes more than the four eggs, um, it should look a little bit like this where it kind of drips off of the KitchenAid mixer. You're going to add the Gruyere cheese. You'll add the nutmeg and the pepper. Then you're going to use two spoons and spoon them out onto a uh, cookie sheet. Once they're on the cookie sheet, you're going to put them into a 400 degree oven. Usually it takes about 10, 15 minutes, depending on your oven. You'll take them out when they're nice and puffed up and brown. Oh my gosh, they look so good. And they are the perfect drinking snack. Not to mention the perfect snack while you are coding, while you're learning to code. So with your Negroni, you now have your Gougiers. So now it is time. We are going to be learning um, how to make a mobile iOS app prototype in Keynote. So Keynote is a super duper flexible tool. It's great for students, but it's really great for entrepreneurs, especially people that have an app idea already that want to test it out. And before you actually put your idea into um, app development and, and hire someone to do it for you, you should really make a prototype. And an easy way to make a prototype is by using Keynote. It's super duper easy to use. Um, I'll show you everything you need to know in order to make your app prototype. And it's working too. So one of the things when you're done making your prototype is you can actually share your app with other people and um, have them test it out and get feedback. So that's a pretty cool feature. So from now on, I really want you to think of Keynote not only as um, a resource to make pitch decks, which you can do an excellent job of making a great pitch deck in Keynote, but also to be able to make your app prototypes. So when you're thinking about your idea, you really want to think about the user experience. So how are users going to be interacting with your app? What are the key features and must-haves and how... Um, can you test them in your prototype? So when you're making your prototype, you really want to make sure 
that you have those items in there, the key features that you want to use. For example, if you want to have your users be able to sign up via your app, you can do that in your app prototype. You will just have to add a link to perhaps like a Google Sheets or something like that for um, people to be able to sign up, but it will still work. So um, Keynote is an excellent way to make a fully working app prototype. So let's get started. The app that we are going to be building today is called Healthy Kids. Um, it's an app that's going to help kids eat healthier um, and be healthy. So it's going to show them like what kind of foods they can eat and different things like that. The first thing though that we really want to do is we want to think about how our people are going to interact with our app. So a great place to start is to go to the Apple developer website and look at the human interface guidelines. The human interface guidelines um, help you really make great apps on the Apple platforms, on any of the platforms, on watch, um, on iPad, iOS, iPad OS, Mac OS, uh, TV. It's a whole huge database of information. Um, you can go through here and just look at every little thing if you want to make really great apps for iOS. Um, they talk about best practices, um, different ways to use icons, different ways that your users might be thinking about using your app. For example, dark mode versus light mode. They also have um, a lot of videos that you can watch to help you design your app and make it a little bit better and make your user experience better. Now that we've spent some time thinking about how our users are going to actually interact with our app, now we need to start designing it. So part of the developer website on Apple is the Apple Design Resources that they give um, potential developers. Um, it helps you figure out ways that you can actually put real iOS um, controls and views and things like that into your keynote and make it really look and function like an iOS app. You can go to their Apple Design Resources and download a file in Keynote, and I'm going to show you that. The file in Keynote, once you download it and open it, you can make a copy of it if you'd like to, and you can copy and paste all of these amazing screen views, um, different controls, different user interfaces. It's amazing, and it will make your Keynote prototype app look and act like a real iOS app. You can find this resource on the Apple developer website. You can also download it, um, or find a link to it, sorry, on Flying Start's website, getaflyingstart.com. One of my favorite things about the design resources is that all of these controls and these views um, are customizable. So where it says title, instead of just saying title, you can obviously, once you copy and paste and put it onto your own keynote presentation for your app prototype, you change title to your own title. So for example, the app that we're making today, I've used some of these design elements and I've changed them to match my app and I'll show you when we get there. But I think that that's my favorite part about these design resources besides making your app prototype really look and act like an iOS app, it makes it really look an app like your iOS app. One of the things that you definitely need to do before you really get too heavily invested in this is you need to make a slide for each screen. Um, each screen that your user sees, you need to have a separate slide in Keynote. You really want to start off by making your Keynote with each screen separate ASAP. Um, I know from experience that once you um, start adding links. If you don't have the proper number of slides, things get crazy really quickly. So you want to think about your app and, and add the slides that you need first. So here we are back at our Healthy Kids app. Um, you can see it looks just like an iOS app, like it would on your actual phone. So the first thing I did was I went and got um, an image that I wanted to use. So this is an actual image. The food pyramid for kids is an actual image that I took off the internet. I resized it um, and I fit it into the iOS iPhone template that I found and the design resources. So I copied that slide. Um, I made sure to keep the copyright from Apple in the very left-hand corner. You need to have that. 
and um, I'm going to add my elements right on top of that. So I started by adding first my um, my background, my one image that I want to have. You can add all of those things individually if you want to make this individually. I'll show you how to do that in the next screen or on the next um, the next screen that we make. Yes, but for this, I just used my own image. So as I said, I just downloaded it and I slid res resized it and then slid it right in. Now what we want to do is each of these things, uh, dairy, grains, fruits, vegetables, all of those things, we want our user to be able to click on those. When they click on those, it should take them to a new screen. So we have to figure out how we're going to do that in Keynote. Um, as I showed you here, we have all of our separate slides. Our slides are already pre-made. Um, I've used, again, the same app templates, the same UI templates that we have in the um, design resources. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to now incorporate the use of shapes. Shapes is um, part of the Keynote app that you can use. They have all different sorts of shapes that you can insert into your app prototype or any presentation that you're making. And it's located right up at the very top. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make some rectangles I think I'm going to do and I'm going to use those to make my links. What I've done here is I've dragged down a square. I've changed it and resized it. I changed it to a rectangle. I resized it and now I'm going to copy it because I want three. I have three links already done but I want to make three more. So I want to make a link now to the dairy page. So I take one of the rectangles and slide it over the words I want to link to. So what I want is when people press it, they get this page, the dairy page, So which we haven't completed yet. So I highlight the shape, I go up to the top, I click Format, Add Link, and see here you can link to a slide, you can link to a web page. We want to link to a slide, but you could do a web page. Remember when I talked about um, adding names to Google Sheets? You can link to a web page, you can link to email. We want to link to the dairy slide. So remember when I said you have to have all your user screens already pre-made your slides because you want to make sure when you start adding links, you're linking to the correct slide number. So here we're going to link it to the dairy slide. And so now uh, our users aren't really going to be able to see anything, even though when they press there, it's going to go to dairy. So what we need to do is we need to go to our shape, highlight it, go up here um, and take opacity and push it all the way down to zero. And see now it looks like there's nothing even there. So let's do it again. Make sure we get the correct slide we're going to link it to. Go up here to format, add link to a slide, and add the slide number. Then we go back, highlight our shape, and slide the opacity down to zero. Let's do it with our final link here on this page. Make sure we get the right slide number. As you notice, you can also, instead of picking a particular slide number, you can do next slide, previous slide. Um, there's a lot of options. So let's see, we've got all of our links added here. Um, it looks pretty good. We haven't done my plate game yet. My plate game, we gotta add this one. So let's see what slide number it is. So we're going to go ahead and add a link there. And let's see what happens. All our links are ready. Let's play it. Once you play it, you can click. Wow, that's pretty cool. We clicked fruits and it took us right to the fruits page. Let's get started designing our fruits page. The first thing we need to do is resize it here because it's a little bit too big for me. All of these fruits I took from the shapes menu at the very top here in Keynote and I just changed the color. So let's do it with a strawberry. Here's a strawberry. I um, copied it to my page and by default they're all blue and I want to change it. So I go over here to the style and click um, fill 
and I choose the color that I want. I like a deeper red for my strawberry. So you can resize them. You can change the color. There, I'm going to resize my strawberry because it's way too big. Also, as you notice, I have the same template that I used on the previous page. Uh, same heading, Healthy Kids and a Back Button. What I want to do now is I want to make a yellow background. So I'm going to make it 192 by 416 after I download a shape and change the color from the shapes menu and I can drag it right on there. As you can see, when I drag it, it doesn't cover up the healthy kids or the back button. The reason is, is I went up here to arrange and I switched it so that those would move to the front and my shape would go in the background. So I slide my yellow on and now let's resize all of our fruits and put them in here. It's still way too big, that banana. This would be kind of a corny app if it was really made because it really doesn't do too much of anything. So of course, as an entrepreneur, you think about, is this actually going to solve a problem? And this app is not going to solve a problem. <laughs> this is just an example. So uh, I wouldn't suggest you make this Healthy Kids app unless you add some really cool features that it can actually do something um, and maybe help um, really help kids eat healthier, then um, I, I guess that that would be okay. This would probably do just as fine being a website. It doesn't necessarily have to be an app. So let's rearrange this, move everything down, our little avocado there, our cherries, our banana. I don't think I'm going to use, I am going to use the text, but I'm thinking I'm not going to use the strawberry or the pear. So let's see. Okay, so what I want to do with my text is I want to write, obviously, the word banana, right? So people know what it is. Then I'm going to resize the text. I'm going to make it a lot smaller, like a 15 or so. You can add a link here too. Let's say you want to have another page that talks just about bananas. You could put a link there and, um, and make a page that talks about bananas if you'd like to in your app. So I'm going to copy this and I'm going to copy it three more times so that I can have a label for each of my fruits. using the guidelines, the lines they sh the, um, that are in Keynote that guide you and tell you for spacing and things like that. And I'll change each one, get them all ready to go. I'm a horrible typist. And finally, my apple. Very good. Okay. Doesn't look totally perfect, but we're going to let it kind of fly. We'll let it ride with this. Okay since this is just an example. Okay, a little more. So we want to delete those two because we really don't want them. So let's um, add a back button. That's what we want to do for sure. We want to add a button so once we get to this page, we can go back. So we're going to add a link again and add a slide. And if we put previous slide, let's see what happens. Let's click the back button. Oh, see, it takes us to a different slide. That is definitely not what we want. We wanted it to go back to the home page, right? That's good app design. So we go back here and we look, and I've already done um, this one to go to the home page. I don't know why, because you're on the home page, so you don't necessarily need that page. But let's go to this one and do it. So we're going to take you back to the home page. So make sure, again, that you put the proper slide number in there. Let's play it and we'll try it again one more time. So from the beginning, let's click fruits. Oh, look, it takes us to our fruit page where we have our apple, avocado, cherries, and banana, and we hit the back button and we go right back home. Now we've got the fruits page done, and I'll leave this for you guys to do the rest of the pages on your own so you can design them. This whole template will be on the Flying Start website, um, and you'll be able to fill it out. But we definitely need to still look at my plate game. So my plate game, this is a quick little one, um, for kids to actually add the foods to their plates. So I've used all of these shapes from the shapes menu, of course, and you can click and drag them into the game. Now I'm going to show you how to make an app that is much easier 
it's just using images. So these are images from my very own app called Mood Monsters Yoga Workshop. So what I did was take screenshots. Um, you can use any images though. I'm assuming that you do not have your app made or else you wouldn't be making the prototype. I'm just using these images to show you how it would look um, if you just were to use strictly images and no shapes. So you take images and you resize them so they are the shape of the iPhone 10. I think it is 192 by 416 and you add a link. For these, we're just going to make it simple. It's going to be next slide. Then we go to the next page and do the very same thing. Format, add link. Again, we can use a web page. We can use email. We can use anything. This page, which is the menu, we're going to add a link. And for the final page, we're going to add a link. All right, so this is a simple, quick, and dirty way of making your own app. Let's see how it works. I made this app with my third grade students a couple of years ago. It's on the App Store, Mood Monsters Yoga Workshop. It's awesome. Helps kids manage their emotions through yoga. So it's really cool. So that worked really neat, huh? So these are all the things we used. These are, this is what we learned today. Um, we learned how to add links. We used uh, different resources to make our apps. Now all you have to do is go out there and you need to share this app with users and let them test it themselves. So I'm going to show you how to do that. You go up here to the collaborate. You hit the collaborate button. And I like to put the share options for anyone with the link, but I don't want them to change it. So I'm going to, ch to change that to view only. You can add a password if you want to. Um, I prefer not to. And then you're going to click share. You can share it so many different ways. You can share it via email like I'm doing right here. You can share it via text message. Um, you can share it by airdropping it. You can do a lot of different things. You know, I just thought maybe you might want to add a password if you are sharing this. Let's say you're sharing this with a potential investor and you don't want um, anyone else to see it. You might want to add a password. But as long as the green is on collaboration, that means the link is working that you've sent and people will be able to use it. So you can copy the link. I'm going to send it to myself just to make sure that it's working and show you how to do that. You know, I don't know if I told you this, but I am the absolute worst typist. I have like, I, I seriously did not go to typing class when I was in high school or college. I skipped typing class every single time. And so I am the slowest, pokiest typer and coder because I do everything with one finger. So there we go. I'm going to type this to myself and give it a send and see how it works out. One of the cool things about the whole iWork suite is that it's all available on iCloud. So when you share a link, when you collaborate, you can share it with anybody. They don't have to be on a Mac. And so there you go. Thanks so much for joining me and learning how to make app prototypes with Keynote. I really hope you enjoyed this. Um, I hope you enjoyed the Gougeres. I really hope you enjoyed the Negronis. I know I did. And I hope you enjoyed learning how to make an app prototype. Um, if you want any of these resources, they are available on Flying Start's website, getaflyingstart.com. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. I'm Karin. I'm the founder of Flying Start. Karin, K-A-R-R-I-N at getaflyingstart.com. I hope you have a great day and hang in there. We'll be back next week when we talk about variables and constants and have a brand new appetizer and a brand new drink. Join me then on App App Aperitif. Thanks again for joining me today.